certainly went by fast. I, uh, I didn't realize that the six month anniversary of uh, me becoming a, uh, or you know, pursuing my dream of becoming a, a full-time landscape photographer, I didn't realize that that six month anniversary had came. It uh, occurred at the end of January and it wasn't until this weekend that I thought back, I was like, holy cow, it, it has been six months already. Damn, that went by fast. <laughs> And my initial thought when I, when I realized that was, uh, you know, of course, God, you know, really went by fast. And I started thinking, I was like, oh, man, am, am I where I wanted to be in, in six months? Did the first six months go as planned? Did I not do what I anticipated in the first six months and just kind of like figure out exactly where my headspace was as it relates to the anniversary? And I started to, to think about, you know, the, the analytics of it all. And I really started to dig into that to, to see what revenue channels are working, what's not working, what do I need to fix? What do I need to do? What do I need to stop doing to really scope out what the next six months are going to look like? Because the next six months are absolutely critical for me because at the end of the day, I'm not rich. I can't afford to continue to float myself, you know, an entire year or over a year if things don't really start to get going, and I'm pretty confident that they will, I'm very positive that they're going to, but if they if they don't, if they don't, I ha will have to poss possibly entertain, entertain the possibility of having to go back to uh, the nine to five or corporate America or something like that. But I'm not even gonna put that on the, in the universe. That's not gonna happen. Just have a good feeling and be happy and, and in love with life and your world. And but I did think about it. So, as I was kind of digging into it, I was like, you know what, I, I want to make the, the six month video. I made a 90 day update, so the consistent cadence would lead me towards making a, a six month video. And I watched quite a bit of you know YouTube and content related to making money as a landscape photographer. And I didn't really want to just talk about, you know, you should do this and you should do that and you should do this, because I think a lot of those videos are like that. And there's only so many different revenue streams out there for landscape photography. And I, and I kind of think that um, there's only a few and everybody's doing them. But is everything working for everybody? That's really the question. And not everything's working for me. Some things are, but some things aren't. And that's what I wanted to talk about today is what channels are working for me and what channels are not working for me and what do I want to do moving forward. And really my mindset for my first year as a, as a full-time landscape photographer is to first start by getting myself out there getting as much exposure as possible and social media is definitely probably the, is the best way to do that so I've, I've been heavily focused on that and some of it's been working and some of it it hasn't been but i'm pretty excited to see that the this youtube channel is really starting to to, to gain some traction and that's very exciting to see i have a couple of charts right here and this is from January of 2018 to the end of January of 2019, so just a week ago, measuring watch time minutes. And I think watch time minutes is probably the best leading indicator for success because, as opposed to subscriber count, because I'm, I'm subscribed to quite a few channels and I, I, I never watch the content. And so like how, how good, of, you know, how good is that? for the, that particular channel. So I think watch time minutes is really the best indicator because it's just showing, of course, the number of minutes that people are actually watching your content, which is obviously the goal with YouTube. And it's nice to see that there's a pretty good trajectory here because right here, or right here really, is when I became, or I left corporate America, or corporate America left me right through here. And so there was a little bit of a dip and it started to, to build up, but then, you know, November and December and October, it was kind of a lull and I got a little bit down on myself. I wasn't really sure what was going on, but then right through here, it really started to pick up. And then right through here, something interesting happened. So I've always heard that, you know, once your YouTube channel gets to 5,000 subscribers, YouTube really starts to kind of promote your, your, your content more. And that's when your channel will really take off. So when I got to 5,000 subscribers, I didn't see anything. If anything, my, my watch time went down. But then something interesting happened at 10,000. And that, that was the other thing I heard. I heard once you get to 10,000 subscribers, YouTube really starts to promote your content. And I'm sure that there's a, a rumor or a story about many, many different milestones out there from a YouTube subscriber uh, basis. But, and I don't know if, it, if it's true or not, but it's interesting. I crossed 10,000 subscribers right here on this exact day. January 3rd, 2019. 
and look at what happened ever since then. I mean, it's been really straight up. This is from last week's video, which um, was very well received, which is fantastic to see. So things are definitely moving in the right direction from a YouTube perspective, which is super exciting for me because this is one of the biggest joys that I have uh, from um, a social perspective is uh, just creating content for this channel. I love making videos and talking all things photography and I love to see when everything is is well received. So it's, uh, that definitely uh, means a lot to me and I really enjoy it. So, and if there was one channel that I want to, or one social channel that I want to uh, be successful, it's definitely YouTube. And as far as other things like Instagram, there's really no revenue tied to that or anything, but I did cross 6,000 followers a few days ago, so that was great to see. My uh, my website is definitely getting more traffic, which is, uh, which is uh, another great leading indicator in my opinion. I've got another chart here actually for that. This is the number of unique visitors on my website per month from January of 2018 to January 2019. This is when I became a full-time landscape photographer and there's a pretty good ramp all the way through here and in December, which is always a, a busy month for me because of uh, print sales. That's definitely the month that I do by far the most print sales. It's also the month, one of the only months that I actually marketed it as well. So it's no surprise that that had the most unique visitors, but going from here all the way up to here is definitely a, you know, a nice slope, but things are definitely moving in the right direction because that's definitely another big goal of mine is to get as many visitors to my website as possible. So from a social perspective, things are, are definitely moving in the right direction. I uh, started a, a email newsletter that I send out a, a monthly newsletter on and I started that I think my second month, so it's been, in, been going on for about four months now, or maybe three months now, and that's definitely growing, and that's super exciting to see as well. So all in all, from a social perspective and getting my name out there and trying to get as much exposure as possible, I think things are, are, went well the first six months. So I was pretty happy to see that and the information, the charts that I was able to, uh, to dig up really kind of helped quantify that in my mind, so that made me feel good. And as far as revenue goes, the revenue is still nothing nothing crazy i think when i made my 90 day update video i think that month i even mentioned in the video i made like around 600 dollars, and i was very excited about that i am happy to say that i'm consistently right around the thousand dollar mark almost right above that every single month now so that feels good definitely moving in the right direction it's also definitely nothing that i can live off of most people can't live off a thousand dollars a month so we def I definitely need to get that you know moving higher and i will but some of the things that are working for me and not working for me a lot, actually I don't really have anything that's not working, but I do have a couple of things that are completely flat, like um, post-processing sessions, Skype sessions. I love doing those. I only do like one or two of those a month. And it's my own fault, I, I've never marketed it. And I need to market that because it's one of the things that I absolutely love doing is connecting with folks on a, on a much more intimate level and you know they send me over a couple of their photographs and we get uh, get online via skype and we can see each other and connect and just go through and i'll edit their photos and it's just it's a great way to uh for them to see a different perspective how somebody else would edit one of their photos maybe pick up a couple tips here and there but the best part about that is I actually stay engaged with a lot of these folks and talk to all of them once, maybe twice a month, they send me a couple photos, ask me a picture, ask me a question about a specific edit, or if they, you know, got a great photo that they're super proud of, they might send it over for me just to uh, to take a look at it as well. So I really like that. Unfortunately, I'm just not doing a lot of those, but that's something I definitely want to to change and start marketing for that. And then print sales, I love doing prints, and it's just so hard to sell them though. So I, that's very flat. You know, I sell maybe one or two prints a month if I'm lucky. And what's kind of discouraging about that is I actually do market that, and I have you know I've re just recently re-updated the the way the, uh, the overall user interface on my print page on my website, and the way it looks from an aesthetics perspective, and it looks beautiful. It's the best it's ever looked, but I'm just not getting a lot of uh, print orders, so that's that's a little disheartening. I, I've got to figure out a way around that. But what I have found success with. Uh, is actually selling the prints completed. So in a frame with a mat and everything like that. And I don't use expensive frames or glass or anything like that. I don't use cheap ones either. And I don't try and make money off of the the, uh, the actual frame and the mat and the glass and all that stuff. I just pass the cost on, which of course definitely increases the cost of the print. But I think that it really helps people to 
kind of envision what the final product will look like hanging on their wall. And it just looks more complete where a print might have seemed like work to somebody. Somebody might be like, oh, it's a beautiful print, but I gotta do this and this and this and this. And I don't know if I'm gonna fuss with all that. I'd rather just buy something completed. So I've had, I have had some success doing that on just a kind of a one-off basis, but um, I'm trying to figure out a way to kind of do that on a, on a larger scale. But uh, it takes a lot of time and work to, uh, to, to frame, print, frame, mat and on every single photo. But I wanna try and uh, figure out something to do with that. And visual wilderness. Now, I've got quite a few comments. I hate to say that. I got millions of comments from people all over the world. That's not the case. I did just get a couple comments, a couple emails about people asking they weren't familiar with what visual, visual wilderness was. And I'll put a link in the description below so you can take a look at that at the, their uh, site. But I've had a lot of success so far with them. So I write uh, blog articles for them on a monthly basis, which is great. Great way to, to get a little bit of revenue, also a great way for additional exposure. And I also have been creating a video tutorial series. I, you might remember I created one, I think it went on sale in December, talking about the, uh, the importance of using range masks within Lightroom. The sales on that tutorial series have been going very well, and that's reoccurring monthly revenue, so that's great to see. I'm actually working on a second video tutorial series for them right now, and once again, that'll add additional revenue on a monthly basis, and I'm hoping to do I mean, at least a few more of those this year, so I have a, you know, three, four, five uh, video tutorial series always on, on sale with uh, Visual Wilderness, so that's something that's definitely been moving in the right direction, so that's exciting to see. Uh, what else, what else? Amazon affiliate revenue. So Amazon affiliate revenue is fantastic. It's all passive income. You know, you somebody clicks the link they, they, for a specific product, they go to Amazon. If they buy the link or buy the product or something else, I get a very small commission. It costs nothing else to the consumer or no additional revenue, for, or no additional money for the consumer. And it gives me just a tiny bit of commission and it, it all adds up to a decent amount, but it's just so inconsistent. It could be as low as $40, it could be as high as a few hundred dollars, but uh, for the most part, it's on the lower end and it's just it's just very up and down. So it's kind of hard to figure out exactly how to, to grow that. Um, what else, what else? Oh, this is something I'm very excited about, but workshops, so I'm not doing any kind of uh, individual workshops right now, but I do hope to do a, a autumn and spring workshop in the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina with a small group, three to five uh, participants. I'm hoping to get that off the ground. I've been working on that a lot. And I was just invited to be one of the instructors at the Out of Chicago Spring Conference in Chicago, which I'm super excited about. Out of Chicago is the company that puts on the uh, out of, out of um, Moab, out of Acadia, the big landscape photography conferences. So it was quite an honor to be uh, invited by them to uh, be a uh, instru instructor and speaker at one of their upcoming uh, conferences. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. I believe it's in April of this year. So that was very exciting. And then as far as I guess things that I regret, you know, I, I, I really wish I started doing things sooner. So like when I was transitioning from corporate America for, you know, the last couple of years there, I, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew what the ultimate goal was to become a full-time landscape photographer. And I worked on all my weekends and I worked late at night to get everything ready. And then once I became a full-time landscape photographer, I started to realize that there were so many things that I could have done while I was technically employed that I didn't do. Things like starting the email subscriber list. That that the number of uh, email subscribers on my list would be tenfold, probably if I would, if I would have started it a couple of years ago, like I should have, or started to uh, sell post processing sessions, or get more serious with print sales, or get more consistent with uh, my content on YouTube. You know, I. I until I became a uh, full-time landscape photographer, that was when I started to focus on the every Wednesday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern, upload on this channel no matter what. And that's definitely helped uh, create some traction on this channel. But I should have done that a long time ago as well. So if I could give anybody any advice who's looking to become a full-time photographer, whether it's landscapes or portraits or whatever it is, before you leave your nine to five job, definitely make sure that you are maximizing as much downtime as you possibly have to get your photography business off the ground. So when you do lose, leave that nine to five and you start your, your new um, pursuit, that you're as prepared as possible because I, I thought I was, but come to find out there's quite a few things that I, I could have done before and I wish I would have worked even harder to get more prepared than I was. But 
Nevertheless, I, there's nothing I can do about it now, and I'm not going to dwell on it, so I'm just uh, onward and upward. And as far as the next six months, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, next six months are insanely critical for me. I want to make sure, of course, that I'm expanding everything that I'm currently doing. So all the revenue channels that I had mentioned, I definitely want to grow all of them even more. I want to also introduce a tourism board. So I want to reach out to tourism boards to see if I can get a com them to, to commission me to go wherever to create some type of content for them, whether it's in my own state or maybe across the world or, or wherever it is. I know I'm not really partial to any specific location, but I think it'd be really cool to create content for a company with, like a tourism board. And you know, whether it's content for the website or social media, or maybe make a video or whatever it is, I think that that would be great. So I've started to reach out to tourism boards just to try and, you know, feel that out and see if I can get some traction there as well. And I also want to, and I'm actually in works, uh, let me try that again. I'm actually in the process of setting up an exhibit this spring. There's a, a spring fest, which is an art show in my local town, which I want to exhibit in this year. And I'm also working on a local collaboration to exhibit at a local business this year as well. So definitely want to make sure that that happens. It's something I've never done before. And probably the number one thing that I really, really want to do is to stop trying to perfect things. That's my plan for the next six months, really beyond, is to stop spending so much time perfecting things. I spend an exorbitant amount of time focused on details that I think nobody ever notices. And it's nothing against anybody, but I just spend too much time on very minute details that I think no, then nobody would ever really see anyway. So why am I spending so much time doing that? And it's really using up too much time that I could be dedicated in a much more productive way. So that's something I really want to do that'll help my time management to stay more focused on the things that really matter right now. So that's the six month update. I, uh, I'm not really sure how long that went. I hope it didn't go too long, but I definitely appreciate you watching. Any questions you have, as always, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, if you could give it a thumbs up, it definitely helps this channel out. And if you're not subscribed, if you could subscribe to my channel, it definitely helps out. The channel, of course, helps me out as well, just to know that things are moving in the right direction. So um, as always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.